Hi everybody, it's Chrissy from Knittin' in the Heights. Welcome back to my channel if you are a returning viewer and welcome to my channel for the first time if you are a first time viewer. So this is a knitting and crafting podcast coming to you from Manhattan in New York City. Today, I am so excited. It is the last day of March, it's Easter Sunday. Um, my daughter Colleen just got on off the plane in at LaGuardia Airport. That was a whole story, but not a great one, but she's safe and sound, so everything's okay. Um, I thought I'd catch up with everybody because being the end of a month, um, I love to actually catch up each month. So this is actually for my April um, podcast, just to show you where I've gotten to in my knitting. I will be sharing some scenes, I think from the very beginning of April, in this podcast at the end, as well as our prize winners. So I will actually be drawing the prize winners tomorrow on April 1st, since the Choose Your Own Adventure Mal, which has been going on since January, is wrapping up quickly here. So thank you all to those who participated. It was so great to have a little community going and cheering each other on just a little bit with our finishes and, you know, digging into our stash and finishing up our whips. So thanks to those that did enter. And if you wait towards the end of this podcast, you'll actually see the winners. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, I'm drinking a bubbly. It is a blackberry flavored one. It's pretty tasty. If you don't know what that is, it's not soda. It's a uh, sparkling water that just tastes like fruit. Um, so I have a finished object I'm very excited about. My apple muffin socks are complete. This was really a joy to knit as well as they, I put them on. They are very squishy, not worn them yet. I'm actually debating saving some of these socks and give, giving them to myself for Christmas. Um, but they are absolutely beautiful. The colorway is called Gingerbread Village. Um, I will put the yarn dyers information below as well as information about the pattern itself. It was top-down sock pattern and it's a textured pattern. Um, can't get into what the texture is because that's why you pay money for the pattern. And uh, slip stitch heel, I did my, the, I didn't do the pattern heel. I did my typical heel because I really like it. So it's a slip stitch heel and I do, I think it's a, called the Dutch heel turn. It's where it's square. And then I do my normal kind of wedge toe, which is a very simple, um, you decrease every other round. It's very simple very happy with this actually very happy and so these might become my christmas socks which is really great so i'm excited about that um this is my only finished object <laughs> it's okay uh i have been very monogamous actually in my knitting so i'm going to show you the projects i've been working on since i finished those i haven't had a ton of knitting time there's been lots of days where i've absolutely not i haven't had any knitting time at all which is kind of a bummer but that's okay, such is life. So I picked back up my Rocket Tea by Tannis Lavelli. Margot, it's coming along. <laughs> so if you don't know, uh, Margot is somebody who has been watching the podcast for a while. And she actually started this and she has finished <laughs> this. But she's been knitting this around the same time uh, that Josh and I started it. And she finished it a while ago. Um, and by the way, Josh just finished his. He just blocked it and weaved in all of his ends. So I'm coming along on my Rocket Tea. It is a very um, mindless pattern. And right now that's what I need. I need something that's not going to take a lot of brain space. Um, yeah, I need to manage these uh, these ends. They keep poking through. I'll just figure that out later. Um, it's just annoying me. But anyway, it's a V-neck t-shirt and I knit mine out of um I'm trying to remember murky depths is the gray colorway and it's called Naker and it's in her base that is cashmere silk and merino and it's absolutely beautiful so Naker N-A-C-R-E that's the inside of like an oyster shell so you get those grays and those like creamy colors and those pinks and the pink is the color Innocence from Knit Picks, and it's the 100% silk fingering weight um, yarn. I can't remember what Knit, Knit Picks calls it, but it is pure silk. And it is just absolutely soft as a cloud. It is really going to be very sheer. <laughs> Let me show you. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, like you can totally see through. So I did bu indeed buy like a camisole to go underneath this. So when it's done, I can wear it. 
Um, but yeah, I think throwing this on with some jeans, um, like in late spring, early summer, it'll be a great knit to wear around New York City. Um, so yeah, so I'm coming along, I want to say I measured under the arms and I'm about, I'm trying to remember, uh, I'm more than halfway down the body length, but not much more. <laughs> it's just more than halfway. You've got this cool detailing on the side seam. So yeah, I mean, it is written for mohair silk um, for the lace weight. Oh, this is a lace weight. Sorry, the silk is a lace weight, not a fingering weight. Um, it's written for mohair sil silk, but I can't tolerate mohair and I can't tom tolerate that fluff. Like that stuff really activates like my allergies slash my asthma. And so going for 100% silk made sense for me. Um, I think this pattern could be easily adapted though to just do two fingering weights. I, I'm thinking if I were to ever knit this again, I would just do two different fingering weights that went well together. And I have so much yarn still. I haven't even gotten to either of the next balls of yarn. I likely will, at least with the, um, the Naker color, which I'm going to show you here in its skein. I will probably get into the second ball of this, but even then I'm not hundred percent sure I will because... It's just this yarn is going forever. My cat has just jumped onto the bed, my cat Luna. So if you get moved, that's why. But yeah, I have plenty of both of the first. I mean, here's where I'm at with the gray. And, you know, it maybe I barely touch it. Then, But then it begs the question, okay, and I don't know if you deal with this with some of the patterns you've done in your life, but oftentimes when I do patterns, there's an overestimation of gauge needed um, for the larger sizes. I'm not sure it's because whether or not they've actually test knit the larger sizes to actually weigh the leftover yarn. I don't think it has to do with my gauge so much. Because I've actually finished like sweaters and had entire balls left over, like entire balls of yarn left over. And so I'm just wondering, do you deal with that as well, where there's an overestimation of yarn? Um, and this one, I don't, I know I, if I remember right, it was kind of like, it was like right on, like I'm, I would need just a little bit of the next skein. But then, okay, so then it, the next question is, what do I do with this leftover yarn? Um, so I'm thinking I might turn it into either a cowl or some sort, sort of shawl, something kind of simple but pretty. Um, nothing too fancy, but something that might, again, stripe the colors or block the colors, do like color blocks in some way. There might be some lace involved, um, but I'm not sure. So stay tuned for that. That's something that, you know, I've been trying to figure out because I am trying to go through my yarn stash. Okay, so yeah, the Rocket Tee. I'm very happy with it. I did find one place and I'm kind of PO'd about it. It was in the silk. Um, it's kind of, it's pretty close to where I am. It's like the stripe below where I'm at right now. So it's the, not the, I'm on a pink stripe now, but it's the pink stripe below the gray. And there is one place where I, I dropped a stitch, but it didn't like, it was only the one stitch. Um, so I don't know. I'll have to fix that later. It, it's kind of creating a bit of a hole, like a holy look right there, but I don't know. Yeah, we'll just see. <laughs> I'm not, I, you know, I'm not that all fussed about it. But um, it is one of those things I was like, why does it look like there's a hole there? Ah, because you dropped a stitch, silly. I mean, I somehow caught it the next way around. So somehow it just, yeah, just fell off for a second. So that's basically what I've been working on, which <laughs> you can see is not a ton since I last spoke to you. But I've got a ton done. I will show you um, where... The stitch marker is, is where I pick this up again after I finish the sock. So I've actually done quite a bit of work. So it's right here. So I've done all of that. So I've pretty, you know, given how limited my crafting time is right now, it's pretty good. If you hear that noise in the background, it is my neighbor coming in or one of their guests coming in right now. That's how those buzzery things sound. And I'm right by the front door. My, my bedroom backs the, the front door to the apartment buildings right there. Good and pluses with that. Good is I don't have to carry my, my stuff up and down multiple <laughs> flights of stairs because there's no elevator in our building. Uh, negative is that you hear everybody be buzzed in no matter what time of day it is. The joys of living in New York City. So one thing I thought would be fun is to actually take a look and do a, at where I am at some of my whips because I've been working through my whips and kind of do a bit of a whip parade to keep me honest because I am really 
wanting to finish works in progress this year. So I thought that could be fine, kind of a fun thing for us to see where I'm at. So I'm gonna start with this huge honking bag. And I don't know when the last time I showed this was, but um, it's huge, this thing. Oh, and it's heavy. And it is my corner to corner crochet blanket. And I just haven't picked it up in more than a year. And right now, oh, the, the, the hook is caught on it. Do, do, do. But it's fingering weight yarn, all leftovers. Um, and I have magic knot balls that I'm using to create it. Sorry, the fancy hook. So this is a hook Gabriel gave me one year, meaning I ordered it <laughs> and it, it I came in time for Christmas. Um, but anyway, it is big. It is to the point now where I am trying to make it into a rectangle instead of a square. Um, and I'm at an end, which is a good place to be. But yeah, I'm turning into a rectangle in instead of a square and um, just using these magic knot balls. And it's just all this great glorious yarn that I either, um, I knit myself or I've inherited. And just to get an idea of how many magic knot balls this girl has made just for this project. I mean, I have this one. Um, I have this one, which has tons of hedgehog fiber in it. I have this one, which is like mostly inherited yarns, actually, from somebody else. I have this one, which is also has a lot of inher uh, inherited yarn. Somebody gave me like the leftovers of their sock knitting stash. And when I say leftovers, like probably 10 to 15 years worth of stash. Um, so it was like the last 20 to 30 grams of each of the balls of yarn they knit on for 15 years. Um, and then I have this cool one, um, which this one's mostly made up of my stash yarn. So anywho, <laughs> I have plenty to finish this blanket. So this is something that is on my, yes, I will get it done list. This blanket is for me. So again, less, I mean, I don't know why I feel this way, but I know a lot of people that make kind of do this too where we do not prioritize things we make for ourselves sometimes. We tend to prioritize gifts for other people. But, you know, it's also, it's heavy. And I feel like the best time to work on it would be the fall or the winter. And I just did not get to it this year. I, I had every intention of knitting this or, or crocheting this and the other blanket I've been working on. But again, I have to stop pretending I'm a blanket maker. I'm not. I'm just kidding. But I do want to finish these things. I could... Logistically, my ch my cat found like a broken off piece of a tiny um, Rubik's cube. My son had got all these tiny Rubik's cubes and he like popped the different pieces off and there's one down there. Anyway, um, that was a tangent, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I have to stop pretending I'm a blanket maker, uh, but I do want to get these done. I could technically, cause it was mainly a um, triangular up until like the last few rows. Um, I could just, you know, take all that back and just make it into a triangular shawl and be done with it and be humongous. So I'm going to keep thinking about that one because I might do that, to be honest with you. I mean, I haven't touched this. I'm trying to think the last time I actually crocheted on it. It's definitely in my last apartment. It was probably in 2020, maybe 2021, but I think it was in 2020. I think it was the winter of 2020. It's 2024. <laughs> I probably, I need to decide what I want to do with this. I mean, it could stay like this forever, but it seems silly. Next thing I want to show you, um, and I just snagged my yarn. That's awesome. That's the only problem with zip bags. Sometimes when you unzip them, they get zip the yarn into them. Oh, let's see if I can get it. Oh, it really doesn't want to come undone. Okay, well, I will work on that later. But anyway, this is the penguin hat um, that I've been working on for my son. Um, I will put the information down below. Um, the last pattern, it was a recipe. It's just a corner to corner blanket recipe that I got off YouTube. So I don't know the pattern, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but this is, I cannot remember the exact pattern name, but it's a, basically a color work hat with penguins all over it. It's super cute. Has a pretty Latvian braid and I am using Drops Alaska. Drops? Am I right? Nope. Drops Nord. Two, two balls of Drops Nord. So I have this color for the white of the penguins. This color, random DVNs. Um, this color 
for the other penguin color. And then the third color is supposed to be the same color as like the Aurora Borealis. Wow, I have all these like random DPN stuff in this bag. This is a different yarn. This one is called, it is not Drops Nord. I can't remember what it is, but I'll look it up on Ravelry and I'll put it down here. Um, but anyhow, I've made the pattern before. Oh, it's Drops Delight. Um, I have made the pattern before. I ended up making the child size, which should have fit my child's head, but my gauge was way off. And um, I will say that the pe other people that have made this pattern have said similar things. So I would recommend going up a size for whoever you're doing this for or just pat. Oh, I got the yarn out, thank God. Um, I would I would definitely swatch for this. But this is waiting. This is like um, after I finish the sweater, this is probably my next knit so that I can have it done in time for next fall. Uh, I haven't touched this since right before Christmas, I think. But it is something for Gabriel and it would be great to get it for him for next fall. He'll love it <laughs> still and it'll fit him still. So let me carefully put that one back. Okay, my next work in progress that I have in here. Ugh, this is heavy. This is another blanket. And I also haven't touched it in a while, although I've touched it more recently than the other one. I have been working on a Battenberg blanket. This is by Sandra Paul of the Cherry Heart Podcast. And it is very pretty. And the plan is to just turn it into a baby size blanket because I have a gajillion, not literally, figuratively. I have quite a few of the colored squares already done. I have enough, I think, to make a baby size blanket. And I have plenty of yarn. So all I need to do is just prioritize this at some point and I will get it done. Um, again, I just haven't been... <sighs> yeah, I'm just not really a blanket knitter or crocheter anymore. When I first started um, crafting, I was. And so now that I make garments, I'm a little bit more excited to make garments or socks because I like wearing my knitwear. I mean, I really do love this. I won't lie. This is actually quite pretty. Um, and I think whatever, like, I think what's going to end up happening is some cousin, because my kids are not old enough, <laughs> like, but some cousin, my sister will, um, she's not going to have kids at this stage, or at least not her, you know, her own biological, biological children. I don't think she's going to have children at this stage, but some cousin somewhere will say, oh, guess what? We're pregnant. <laughs> and then Chrissy's going to be like, oh, I know what to make you. And it's just going to come out. I think that's what it's going to be. So that's totally what happened with the last blanket I finished. If you've been watching the podcast, you got to see that whole stuff. And she did actually, she's been sending me pictures of the baby wrapped up in the blanket, which is pretty cool. She did really like it actually. Um, yeah. So that will come along too. That'll happen at some point. Okay, so now let's get into some of the more um, garmenty slash shawl type stuff that I have going on here. All right, so this is my Timely Cardigan. <laughs> it's not much of a cardigan yet, but this is the Timely Cardigan by Libby Johnson that I cast on at the beginning of Advent. And I am using some really pretty colors actually for this. I am using my Advent calendar. I think it was from 2021. It was the Rainbow Advent by Lay Family Yarn. And the idea is this is going to, it's going to fade in a rainbow in the exact color sequence that they gave us the yarn in. And it's striped with this Knit Picks. I think this is Hawthorne, am I right? No, Stroll Fingering Weight. It's a fingering um, weight yarn and it's 75-25. So it'd be perfect for like socks. But in this beautiful baby blue, because none of the blues... Um, we're the same color, it's like a rainbow in the sky. So that's the idea. The color of this, I'm trying to find my answer. Frost is the color way. So I've had this kitted up for a long time and I did start it at the beginning of Advent and I was knitting 24 minutes a day and then didn't have the bandwidth <laughs> after the first few days because I started my new job. Uh, but yeah, I this is actually a very enjoyable knit. I will definitely be coming back to this sooner rather than later because I want this garment. I've been wanting it for a long time. Okay, next, um, we'll go into this. This is a shawl. This is a St Stephen West shawl. <laughs> this is a Stephen West shawl I did not finish because I don't finish Stephen West shawls for some bizarro reason. So this is, is it shawlography? Is it 
It was one of his mystery knit alongs. Down here, I will put it. I don't think it's all out of free because I, the other one I never finished that I just kind of bound off and turned it into like house decorative stuff is over here. Uh, I don't remember <laughs> which one this is, but it's the one that has, it makes everything look like braids. Um, yeah, so this one is coming along. Haven't touched it since I put it away, but I need to, I am going to finish this. This is a gift for a friend that she knows she's getting. Um, it is specific to her because once I saw the finished project, I was like, mm, I don't, I wouldn't wear it. She thinks it's actually really cool. So we're going to go with it. She loves the colors. I do actually love the colors. So let's go over this. Um, this yarn is by Craft House Magic and it's in the color These Days. And it's sparkle base, which you can see. So it's a gray, um, bunch of different kinds of gray, like charcoal gray and a lighter gray. And then it has hints of chartreuse in it as well. Uh, and then the pop of color that you need for this is this color, which is chartreuse. And we got some yarn barf, but it is called Come on Eileen. And then the, the dark color, this color is Ash by a Homespun House. And so, yeah, we're just going to keep, we are going to work on this. We're going to get it done. Um, it's in, on my to-do list. It's one of the things that I hope to get done this year. Basically, all of these, you know, bar the blankets, um, I would actually like to get done this calendar year. So that's how I'm kind of doing things right now is, okay, let's go through my whips. Um, the only cast on that I'm going to do um, that I have plan for a new thing I want to cast something on for my birthday and we'll talk about that in a minute okay two more okay this one has been on the needles for a while this is my oak it's not oak leaf it's by Nim Teasdale I can't remember pattern names today guys I'm putting the pattern name right here it's oak something, shawl. It'll come to me if I don't try to remember it. Um, I'm on the lace. I've been on the lace for a while and it's supposed to make these gorgeous, um, like an oak leaf kind of lace pattern. Everything from here up is actually just a recipe and you can kind of do things where you want, but it's this that you pay all the good money for. The yarn I'm using is Murky Depths and So Sweet Sparrow. No, Sweet Sparrow, not so Sweet Sparrow, just Sweet Sparrow yarns. Um, so Sweet Sparrow yarns, it was in a club colorway called Turion. And Murky Depths is uh, Dried Blood and Roses, which I bought for my birthday for myself. That's Gabriel. Bought for my birthday myself um, two summers ago. So I am coming up to my 50th birthday and we'll talk about that in a second, but yes. So for my 48th birthday, I bought that and cast this on my 48th birthday. So I'd love to have it before my 50th birthday. So yeah, so this is also on my to-do list sooner rather than later because my birthday's in July. So what I'd like to do, I think, is in the ordering of these things, I think I'll do the penguin hat and this. And then um, we'll go from there and I'll choose from the, my other whips. But my very last whip is an easy peasy lemon squeezy one. So we have this beautiful, it's gonna be a cushion cover, okay? And all I did was I took a recipe, oh, sorry, my nose is itchy because of the pollen outside. <laughs> so it's a, just a square cushion cover. It's got like this pinhole thing. It's a recipe, you can turn this into a blanket. I don't have the patience to do a, knit a blanket like this, but a cushion cover I can do. So basically all I did was I elongated on one side and added some Place where I can so do buttonholes so that when this is all done it can, you can fold it over basically like that and you can button it um yes I have a cushion cover um so yeah I just need to do the other side <laughs> so that's the next step is to do the other side and you know try to get it to the same dimensions and then I can do that this would be a great use of just leftovers and I have a bunch of leftovers already in here but I have been collecting leftovers, so that's the next step. And that's it in my whip basket, which, you know, it's a good number of whips. It's not intimidating though. It doesn't feel too crazy. It's 
pretty reasonable. Um, so yeah, I think I can finish all of those things this calendar year pretty easily. So going back to my birthday, so my birthday is coming up um, in July and I am taking my kids and I am, we are going to Montreal. And so I do plan on casting on something for my birthday and I'm thinking it's probably gonna be socks, something that would be easy peasy for um, the trip, you know, on the plane and, but also just something I know I can finish pretty fast because some of these are bigger projects that I really wanna get off the needles. So now that I've shown you all my whips, what I'd love to do is take a minute and I'm gonna just change things up here for a second. And I'm gonna show you my dream knitting basket. These are things that I already have caked up. Some of them have needles, some of them are totally ready to go. Or I have some really good ideas of what I wanna do with these yarns. So give me one second to reset and I'll be right back. Okay, so let's take a look at some of my dream knitting. So these are things I really have wanted to knit and these are things I have yarn for already. So we're gonna start here. So I've talked about some of these on the podcast before, but this will also keep me honest of <laughs> all the things I wanna make, cause it's a lot. So um, I have four yarns that all come from club colorways from Sweet Sparrow Yarns. And I was looking at my yarn collection and I noticed that these two in particular look extremely similar. They are two different yarns from two different clubs. Um, it doesn't matter to me. I think if I were to stripe these, they would look like pretty much they, you know, they're hand dyed. So it could work to make this the main color of a color work sweater. So we have Avel. Um, this is from the Celtic folklore and fairy tales. And we have the wood sorrel fairy. And I think both of them, they're very, very similar. I mean, one of them is lighter than the other. This one's lighter than this one. Um, but other than that, they have like a lot, most like the same color speckles throughout, like the same kind of brown is in one versus the other. One is more speckled than the other one. They have this green and that green is over here. So I think it actually will work. They're actually on the exact same base. They're both on a gold Stellina base. So this would be the main color of the sweater. And this, uh, the color work sweater I'm talking about is Annie Lupton's Heartbeat, B-E-E-T sweater. So it takes three color, three colors. Then you need a darker color. And so I chose this one, which does go with this because it's kind of the, that dark color in here that is speckled in. This is called Sawin. Um, and this was Sawin from 2021, I think. Yeah. And then finally, we have this really cool color, which picks up some of those greens actually um throughout and speckles other ones so that you need a light color and this one is called Bridget also from Celtic folklore and fairy tales so I thought this would be a beautiful way to turn club colorways into a color work sweater and I love making color work sweaters so it's a beautiful yoke sweater um I'll try to put a picture up so you can see and yeah I think this would make something really really cool and we'll just see how it goes so that is my first dream knitting project. My second dream knitting project. This is me, me doing a redo. <laughs> so I made the Moonlit Magic mitts last year and they are beautiful color work mitts using these two colors from Murky Depths. This is the Copper Prince and this is cranberries and cornbread or cornbread and cranberries. I can't remember the order. <sighs> not only did I not change the needle size, but then I did finish them. They were great. They were just a tiny bit tight. Fine. Can deal with that. We went to Bryant Park when I was filming um, for Vlogmas and I proceeded to lose one of them. <laughs> Literally the second time, first time I wore them. So anyway, I'm going to re-knit it, re-knit it properly. I have enough yarn to re-knit them as I did before, but like with a bigger needle size so that they're not tight. Um, so yeah, so that needs to be re-knit because I really like that pattern. So yeah, I'm a little bit, that one hurt my soul just a little bit. All right, what do we got in here? This is, oh, some leftovers and minis because um, I would like to make another pair of socks. This was in the Bunny Hop colorway by um, 
Suzanne at Green Lambkin Yarns in her sparkle base. I knit a pair of socks for Colleen out of this. And I also got the Green Lambkin Yarns um, advent calendar and it had these two colors. And I thought this would be really fun because I didn't have quite enough to make a full pair of socks, but you know, toes, heels, cuffs, this could be super fun. So anyhow, that's what I'm planning to do. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it, like which is which, like I haven't decided yet. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna make socks out of these guys. Could even stripe in, especially this one. I could stripe this in if I wanted to. This one, I think it'll be a striper. Not sure. But this kind of did like some cool mini stripes that I really liked. So yeah, this is coming up at some point. I mean, this could be an easy cast on for my birthday, possibly. We'll see. All right, next. Let's see what's in here. Okay. Aha. Oh, I just hit myself in the face. <laughs> the cable needs to love that. So I have all of this great tweed yarn I have to show you guys. It is so much fun. I have leftovers from things I barely touched. Like this is almost an entirely full skein of, um, this is blueberries. The color is blueberry from Sweet Sparrow Yarns. Um, it was part of the Wild Foraging collection at one point, but this is the Wild Blueberry color on tweed. Um, I have... Hold on, I gotta pull all the yarn out. I have Peony from Lay Family Yarn on her tweed base. I absolutely love this color, it's absolutely luscious. Um, it's on Donegal tweed, um, very, very pretty. I have, this is like one of my favorite skeins ever by Dar Ducky Darlings. The reason I got it, it's called Viva Viola. Um, it was for the Flower Power uh, Miss Memory Curie Flower Power Fund. However, I'm a viola player. And so finding something that not only was called viola, but looks like the same colors as my viola without, my viola doesn't have purple in it, obviously, but all the other colors are in my actual viola. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, first of all, look at these colors together. And I also had from 2020s, I think it was 2020s um, Advent, calendar from Sweet Sparrow. I had all of these 10 gram minis. They're all tweed. Okay. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And if you look at these colors together, they're all telling a very cool fall kind of color, color palette story, right? You've got these golds and oranges with purples and reds and yeah, just terracotta, just really cool colors. So the idea would be to take a raglan sweater pattern, not sure which one, for fingering weight, and basically do stripes. Um, I've never done the flax light. Um, I have done the flax sweater for a tiny person, but you know, the, my so faded sweater is the one that fits me the best. Very tempted to just use the numbers on that and then create these beautiful stripes, like do big chunks of these ones, and then followed by like, a, like do something crazy, like, like start up here and then do that, you know, for a small stripe and then maybe do a big stripe here, right? And then another small stripe, another color, but like one that contrasts, you know, and just kind of like build it down, but like do like blocky stripes, but like thin stripes. I think that'd be really great, actually. So I'm keeping them all in this great big bag I got from Sweet Sparrow with her um, foraging collection thing, which I absolutely love. It's really, she she makes these humongous bags that are perfect for sweaters and blankets, just saying. So if you do a club, or I know for her advent um, calendar this coming year, you're gonna get one of these big bags. Um, I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend these bags. Cool, next, <laughs> we got lots going on in here. Um, that's my spinning, that's not doing anything. I just keep my little spindle in this um, with uh, the tiny bit of stuff I have left over. Okay, next we have, this is, and always I have this. Um, I have this ready to go at any time because I use this scrubby yarn. It's Red Heart um, Silver something. It's like a scrubby yarn. I make scrubbies to give as gifts for people with a crochet hook takes an hour to make a scrubby. So if I ever need it, it's there. Um, let's see what's in here. I'm gonna save my Halloween ones for last. Cause, oh, these are, this is just a pile of bags. 
that's just in here just to store them. Okay, so let's do, oh, we have this one. I have another set of yarns ready to go for socks. These would be shorter socks, not short. Well, they might be shorty socks, I'm not sure. Might have to pull out another skein, but these are just leftovers. Um, this was from a homespun house. This is about the same amount. This would be like the main foot. Um, and then I have this. Oh, it's from in a little house in the prairie colorway. Um, on the shores of Golden, on the shores of something lake, Silver Lake. On the shores of Silver Lake, I think. It's got these pinks and purples and like those kind of colors. This is leftover yarn um, that I used in my so faded. And it is, I would not use this on the toes or the heel because this has cashmere in it, but I could use it around the cuff um, like that. And this is from Chelsea Lux. It's her cashmere base. And then this is just a mini, a sparkle mini. This could be for like the toe and the heel. So that's, this could also be something that I throw in a bag this tiny little bag and take with us to Montreal for my birthday and cast those socks on there. Be very easy to do. Okay, so let's go to my Halloween stash of yarns. These are fun. So I have in here leftovers from last year and the year before. I I swear to God, I've made like two pairs of socks already out of this yarn. So I have enough to use this and then stripe it with something else. Um, yeah, so I have plenty of this. This is Biscot yarns. And then I have leftovers. I made Franken socks last year, so I would do that again. But I have all these like little bits of leftovers that I could totally do the same thing and make Franken socks again. You know, do a few stripes here. It doesn't have to be matchy matchy. Uh, but then I also have this larger skein, which has like, if I remember right, this is one of the Lay Family yarns that came in the witch's stocking box this last year, but I am using the rest in another project. And so I threw this in here just to add to the sock thing. So for Halloween, for around um, ha Halloween, there's two, um, I do plan to cast both these on. So at that stage, I should be kind of good with some of these other projects. Okay, so this is the big one for around Halloween that I plan to knit. I'm going to knit the True Color Shawl by Melanie Berg. The main color I'll be using is some leftover uh, Malabrigo yarn in the Plomo colorway, which is a really pretty dark slate gray. And then the rest is the Lay Family Yarns, which is stocking collection. So basically I'll put a picture up of the um, pattern. So you alternate colors um, and it creates this really pretty Thing, and I feel like this will be super witchy. I'm excited about it. So that'll be something that'll really push me on through the year to like help me get ready to knit that shawl because that will be a very fun shawl for me to knit. Okay, is that it? I think that's it for my dream knitting, but I think I have enough. <laughs> I really do. I mean, I know that some of these things will go into next year for sure. I'm just really hoping that I can get the majority of my works in progress that are currently in progress done. And yeah, if I end up, the one thing, I think there are two that I really want to start. I want to start at least one pair of socks on my birthday. And the other um, thing I really, really feel like I, I need to knit is those hand, those mitts that I'm re-knitting for myself. I decided to not just knit the one simply because I would want them to be the right size. It makes sense, right? So might as well do better. But I actually do plan to get a um, a couple of shadow frames to because I have the other pair of mitts that I mittens. I have a pair of mittens as well that I lost one of them on a subway at some point. And so their color work, they're very pretty. I was thinking of getting some shadow frames for both of them and make them like like almost like a museum piece <laughs> because I feel like when you work on color work like that and it comes out really beautifully, it's I don't want to throw it away. So I want to do something with it. So I'm just going to make them look like artwork because they are. Okay, two other things. So I have some Happy Meal and um, this actually came a while ago and I just forgot to show it in the last podcast. But back in December, I ordered a box. Oh, sorry, my leg hurts. I'm sitting kind of crazy. I ordered this really cool box of yarn um, that was I thought was going to come by Christmas. It didn't and that's fine. 
because I wasn't here anyway. <laughs> um, but it was really cool. Um, it's by from Haverland Sock. And the idea was it was, so she does these clubs where one is dark woods. It's kind of like spooky tales. And the other is like cryptids. And she came up with this incredible box just for like Christmas time. Okay, so let me show you what came in it. First of all, look at that color palette. I can't even show you how pretty it was because it was it was wrapped so beautifully. I have taken stuff out and looked at it, but it's so cool. So I am planning on making a shawl with this as well. Um, or it, it has to be something I'm going to wear. Um, it could be like a short sleeve something, but it just, yeah, it needs to be something really beautiful. So anyhow, we've got, um, there's tons of information, first off, on all these yarns and in the box, there's all these stories, which once I get into it, um, like I'm going to, when I actually do stuff with this box, like the stuff in this box, I'm going to be reading all of this in detail because it's kind of like, you know, it's getting to see it for this, you know, again for the first time in a way, but it is just so pretty. Um, so this whole thing is called Lumberjacks and Yarns of the Dark Woods. And so it's all these stories about the dark woods and just fall and winter. And she put in here all these cool cutouts. And this one, I, again, I need to figure out a way to highlight this in something. Look at how gorgeous that is. Like what? This is paper. <laughs> I need to be, be very careful. I need to do something with all of this. She cut out all of these leaves. There's these tiny little moons that are really hard to get up. But this is how it came packaged. It was so beautiful, you guys. So please go and buy stuff from Haverland Yarn. It is so pretty. And then in here, there was tea in here, which I took out. Or no, there's still tea in here, actually. I did take some out as well um, from something else. Because I got something else. But this was the stitch marker that came with it. And it's glass. So pretty. Yeah, there's some black tea in here. So yes, I'm kind of keeping this all like together and safe. But let me show you the colorways. Not sure what I'm going to make with it. I was thinking, you know, I could make a short sleeve sweater. I might have enough yarn for that. Or I could just make a really beautiful shawl. Or I can make, I was thinking, well, Chrissy, you might want to just design your own shawl for a change. I could do that. There's no reason. Nothing says I can't. But I, do I have a lot of time? That's the hard part. So your main color is called Dark Woods. It says monsters don't live in the dark. Monsters live in the cold. The darkness simply follows. It's kind of spooky and I love it. So it's all these really cool, beautiful, rich, but cool colors. I mean, it's just so pretty. And then all the minis that go with it really do go with it. So this is dark woods. So I'm going to put that one back. This one is called winter weasel. And it's the color of winter weasels. We have here, this one is called the Wendigo, which I need to be careful of. There's a whole story that goes up with the Wendigo too, which is a really cool brown color. Okay, we've got this color. I think this is, what is this color? It's somewhere in here. Um, Weasel. This one does, this one came with dark woods, I want to say. So this one came with this, if I remember right, like a sock set. Okay, then we have this color, which is called Luna Moth. Oh my gosh, so cool. And then finally, dark forest. That needs to be something epic. This is really beautiful and she packaged it so beautifully. We had some issues with shipping, which took it a little longer to get to me. We're not sure what happened. Like we, listen, there's been a lot of issues with the USPS this year. Like, it, like I have not been getting some of my mail at all. She was so kind. She, I told her about it. Um, she got right back to me. She ended up resending the entire thing out to me and I mean, it came and I was just so grateful to her. 
for actually taking the time to do to do everything properly as a business owner. So please, please, if you're looking for yarn, go to um, Haverland Yarn. It is on Etsy and just take a look at her shop. She has some beautiful stuff. She also has this beautiful self-striping yarn. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. And they're hand-wound self-striping balls. Please take a look at her shop. It's so, so great. All right, I'm just going to review the prizes for the Choose Your Own Adventure, Mal. And we didn't have a ton of people enter, at least on my side. So I have three prizes. I'm going to give all three away, you guys. So if you entered, <laughs> you're probably going to get a prize. Uh, except for Alicia, because Alicia and I can't get prizes. So I was running this with Alicia from uh, Apple Crafts Podcast. So we have three skeins of yarn. Um, one, There are two are from Apothecary Fiber company and the other one I actually got here in New York City so let me show it to you. So the first one from Apothecary Fiber Company is called Toasted Marshmallow. So pretty. Trust me I really wanted to steal this for myself but it's okay I've got plenty of yarn. I do not lack in the yarn department. So that is one prize. Second prize is a one-of-a-kind color, color from um, Apothecary Fiber Company and it's got all these really pretty kind of uh they're tealy blues and this rusty red and this like really pretty brown color, tan brown color. And it's got speckles of black, which I thought was really cool. So yeah, this is a uh, kind of a beigey base with little, uh, the, the dye has broken in some places and you can see tiny speckles of orange. It's a really cool colorway. And then finally we have from Yarn Love, this really cool skein called Tinkerbell. So that's the third one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back um, tomorrow and tomorrow night and I will draw the prize winner. So you'll have to stick around to the end to see who won the prizes. So that'll be after the vlogs. Anyhow, um, so what are you going to see in the vlogs? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> uh, just to give you a little update on our lives. Um, Gabriel's going to be on national TV tomorrow, guys. He was asked to be on the NBC Today show starting at 7.30. So I'm going to actually take some video of us in the square where they're filming. Um, and I'll probably, I'll put it on. Um, he was invited to do a clinic on TV with the Philadelphia Eagles football team's Autism Foundation. Um, they do these clinics for kids with autism um, to teach them football, to teach them cheerleading to teach them drumline I, I have no idea what Gabe's gonna be put into but it's gonna be a lot of fun and he's doing that tomorrow morning um Colleen is here until Thursday and we're getting ready for our big yearly gala at the org at my organization that's next week so this is why I don't have a lot of crafting time but otherwise things are going really well Gabriel and Colleen are very loud in the next room. <laughs> They're having a blast talking to each other. But it is one of those things where um, I just have to keep going. I'm going to be exhausted, I think, until this gala is over. The gala is on April the 9th. So we don't have a lot of time. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're hoping to raise a lot of money for the organization so we can bring music and art to kids all over the city. Anyhow, I want to thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you win a prize. <laughs> stick stick around to the end. Um, and if you do win a prize, please make sure to email me. I will put my email details in the in the um, description box below so that you can email me directly. I'll need your name and I'll need your mailing address. Please don't put it in the comments below, but please put it in an email to me so that I know how to get the yarn to you. Okay, I hope everybody has a very, very happy, happy, happy Easter. If you celebrate and if you don't, uh, I hope you ha have a happy start to spring. I hope everybody is doing well and I'll see you next time. Bye everybody.
watch watch NBC. Watch it. Watch it. If you don't watch it, I'm telling the teachers on you. To laugh, and when the sun is out, I've got something I can laugh about. I feel good in a special way. I'm in love, and it's a sunny day. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. We take a walk. The sun is shining down Burns my feet as they touch the ground Good day sunshine Good day sunshine Good day sunshine Then we lie Beneath the shady tree I love her And she's loving me She feels good She knows she's looking fine I'm so proud To know that she is mine Good day Sunshine Good day Sunshine Good day Sunshine Good day Sunshine There's two floors upstairs, a lot of bedrooms, private residence, and they just love coming down. Well, uh, thank you for opening up the house for the Easter egg rules. This is an important thing, so the Eagles Autism Foundation is the perfect example. Let's talk about that because this is a cause that's near and dear to you. What's yes. the connection? Um, I have told this story so many times, I feel like probably <laughs> if people okay. have heard it before, they're probably sick of it. Um, I had a neighbor growing up, Tim who was like my brother. He called me his, me and my sister his sisters, my mom his girlfriend, and my dad the boss. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he was just a constant. He was always around, um, and it was a learning experience that I didn't even know we were gaining. Mm. Um, and so it gave me this yeah, deep out there yeah. just a few of our Eagle Spots, the takeover. We've life. got the cheerleaders, the drumline, the mascot, all here ready for our special event, shining a light on autism wow. awareness. Look at that. We're ready. And Swoop is here. Let's go. Swoop, there it is. After your local news and weather. This morning on autism, We've got some great kids and families, and some really special events just ahead. All right, Hoda, thank you. Coming up next, we've got a lot more with Kylie Kelly. <laughs> I mean, the lead is taken by uh, Kiki, and um, she helps put together a space that is accepting and understanding and uh, applies all of the sensory needs that could possibly be met. So it's awesome to watch. All right, yes! Woo! All right, next up. Ready? 42. 42, set, go, 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 Way to go. You got it, honey. You got it. Let's go. Ready? Ready? Show me how to do it. Set, go. You got good footwork. I know. I've seen it. Go. Go, 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 There we go. Looking good. All right. He's got the move. He's got the move. He's got the celebration. We got recruits. We need to get these kids recruited. All right. 
With the Eagles Oxen Foundation and Jeffrey Lurie's leadership, we're taking awareness to action. This is a great example of it. it. And in addition to the awareness, it almost becomes acceptance. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's really important. You're choosing your words wisely. We know that the awareness has spread so widely, but now it's now we've Bring moved on. We're accepting. We're going to be inclusive. I love it. And you get this. I love this it. when you do that. I love it. All right, you guys. Oh